What's up guys, Mike BAK Phony. This is another vlog inside of my house with the sun now in my face, which is great because the sun feels amazing today. It really, really, really does. No gloves needed, just wonderful sun. Actually, you know what, now that I'm standing out here, I'm feeling that I'm not gonna like it. It's a little too much. Much, much, much better. Okay, so what a difference it makes is moving over just like a couple inches. Uh, the trash guy, right now, of course. Okay, it's quiet now. Today we're gonna to talk about Content ID, the changes that have come down from YouTube uh, across all videos, basically, and how it affects you guys as viewers, how it affects us as content creators, how it affects MCNs. I speculated on the MCN portion last week, uh, talking about yeah, taking what little bit I knew about what was changing and uh, kind of speculating on it a little bit. Now I have a very, very good idea of how uh, things are probably gonna be rolling out over the next several months or even over the course of the next year. So we're gonna start off with the content ID changes that have occurred over this past week. A lot of you guys who follow a random YouTube personality such as myself, or Northern Lion, or MHAP, or any of these guys, you guys have already seen that you know, so these guys are getting hit uh, on a lot of their videos. The number of videos that I've been hit on uh, by this new content ID algorithm is one. I have 1,100 videos. I have over a thousand, say, well, I have over a thousand videos. One has been tagged with content ID. Now, those of you guys know that in the past I've had my run-ins with content ID matching and all that stuff, and a lot of the a lot of times it's not legit. Sky Italia heard me heard me say "poop" in a "Don't Starve" video, and it flagged it for some reasons because the content ID system is sometimes wrong. Uh, other times it is right, but it is also wrong because it's not a properly a properly identifying and uh, dealing with that particular content ID piece, or the content ID matched piece. How did I end up with a thousand videos and only had one? I knew that I wasn't gonna get hit hard. I knew that I wasn't because I've always taken precautions uh, to, to avoid this stuff. For those of you guys who've been following me for a while, you guys know I had an old channel. It was youtube.com slash wowphony. And in that channel, I, uh, I was nailed with content ID strikes and content ID matches and all that stuff. And that's why I eventually ended up bailing on that channel and moving over to AKA Mike B. Uh, I did it because the channel was was like one strike away from just poof, disappearing off the face of the earth, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to you know, take that risk. Now, just so you know, I, I deal a lot with music. I license my own music through through uh, through YouTube, technically, right? I mean, in the end, uh, but through various other sources. You can find myself on iTunes and all that. Uh, so I understand how licensing works from that end. So taking that knowledge from Wild Phony account, and taking the knowledge that I've accumulated from actually licensing music myself. I was able to apply that in this channel, AK Mike B, and uh, use it to my advantage. And it's actually fairly, I didn't realize that this knowledge was gonna be, you know, essentially invaluable to some, but uh, it is. The, the changes that came down was basically YouTube found a way to make their algorithm better. And what happened is they re-ran that and they flagged a ton of videos that they initially missed. It could be because maybe the clip of, uh, of audio that you were playing was so short that, you know, it didn't maybe trigger the, uh, the, the, the actual content ID algorithm. I didn't trigger it, therefore it did not actually uh, apply to you. Now, those of you guys who have a ton of videos with 30 plus or 50 plus or even 100 plus tags on your account, uh, well, it's because their system just got better. Now, how do you recognize a video from a viewer standpoint that has been matched with Content ID? Uh, that's usually pretty easy. Typically, Content ID match is, matches are related to audio. That's the easiest one to do because audio is just two channels, right? Stereo, left, right. All you have to do is analyze that, look for a certain something, certain waveform. Uh, and then once that waveform appears, then tag, that's it. The way you recognize those is very simple. Go look for some, some music video by some artist like Katy Perry or something or Ellie Goulding. Type in some popular artist plus lyrics in YouTube search and you'll find a bunch of you know, lyric videos that you know, they, they are technically not supposed to use a song, but they're using it for the purpose of saying, hey, I have the lyrics here so everyone can read the lyrics and also sing along to the song. You, there's tons of those, you guys have probably already seen them. Usually, under, usually underneath those videos, there's a little tag that says, buy this song now on iTunes. That is not placed there by the person who posted that video, that's placed there by the Content ID matching system. It recognizes that, hey, this is Katy Perry's Space Rockets video. There's just, I don't even know. I don't know any Katy Perry songs. Man, I'm so, I'm so unhip with that stuff. That's not placed there by the person who posted that video. That's actually matched and placed there by the Content ID system. The ads that are playing on that will go towards Katy Perry or Ellie Goulding or you know, whoever else that that, video, that song actually belongs to. I know this because I've actually licensed my own music. Like I said, I've licensed my own music and I've actually received royalties from people using our music in their videos. It'll get flagged with ads and also a little buy now. And then on my end, in my 
uh, in my stats showing my sales, I'll see one for uh, all music licensing. I think it's all music, so capital A, LL, no space, music, and then there's another one, Media Sync or something. Uh, it'll show up that I'm making X amount of dollars from that, which is not a lot, which is why I've actually gone through and I've removed all the licensing on all my songs because it's like it's such a pain in the ass to maintain and I don't want to like screw somebody who decided to use a song that they liked, which is my stuff, on their videos. Of course, I'm an independent musician, independent artist, uh, much, more, much different than, you know, somebody that is signed to a major record label. Now throughout the day you've seen a publishers come out and say, hey, we didn't know this stuff was happening. Uh, why don't you send us a link and we're gonna try to get it resolved by the end of the day. My one video was actually from a Ubisoft game, Tomb Raider. Uh, my Tomb Raider Let's Play was flagged for one of the songs that was in it. I tweeted it yesterday, I was like, woo, I finally got one. I, was, I, I thought that I was missed. I thought that maybe the entire system missed me altogether, but it turns out it did hit me and it sent me a message saying that, so this song was licensed by such such so and so. But here's the thing. Whenever you license music to that company, that publishing company, like, you know, for Tomb Raider or whatever, and then you go and you, you register it with, you know, whatever digital music catalog system, that digital music catalog system could do the same thing that I'm doing, like through, you know, going, going up through uh, uh, all music, media, media, media sync and all that stuff and licensing my music through YouTube, whenever it's recognized by the Content ID algorithm system. What's happening is that music is being recognized now and it's being flagged. So the publishers are like, wait, we didn't know this was happening. Of course they didn't know it was happening because that's, somebody there is working with a company, a third party company that knows that they did this. It's not the publisher's fault. Publishers just submits all their music to a digital music catalog and then that, that system will automatically go up in sync. It'll come back down and anything gets flagged, which typically is music, uh, will, will you know, basically be done and we'll, we'll get ads placed on it, content ID match, warning, whatever. Uh, and then of course the publishers are like, what just happened? Uh, and those are the ones that are legit but handled you know, incorrectly. Those are, those are real claims. You can't just upload the music and put ads on it. You can't. Uh, but you know, when, in the case of it being used in the game itself, which is the intention of it, uh, well, that's, it's gonna get flagged. So whenever you get a content ID, dis, uh, content ID uh, flag, it's okay to dispute it. You can dispute it once, just, and I mean like per video. Let's say you post a video, of a Binding of Isaac Let's Play or something, and let's say uh, there's a song or something playing in the background because uh, it was from a live stream. A lot of people that live stream, they play you know, music that they don't li have licensed you know, in the background. Uh, then it's flagged. If you feel like, I can stream this, I own these rights to this stuff, which in that situation you don't, just so you guys know, then you can, you can actually dispute it. Now you dispute it, it's free of charge, it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't, there's no risk, you just dispute it, you send it off, YouTube's gonna be like, oh, be careful, we're gonna delete your entire account. Just dispute it, you'll be fine. If, if they kick it back and they say, no, we're gonna reinstate the content ID match, then guess what? You are basically fucked. You cannot appeal a content ID uh, claim unless you absolutely are 1000% sure that you will win that fight. Because if you don't win that fight, there's a high probability that it can turn into a copyright strike. If you get three strikes, you're out. Just like baseball. I was this close to having that happen to me. That was more for malicious stupidity um, on uh, the, the claimant's position. I won that fight. It just took a really long time. You can, you can fix it. I just watched a video of some guy said, you're out, you're done. You can never do anything again. No, that's not true. You can do something about it. It's just gonna take, you actually have to like write a letter, right? Uh, so, and, and like mail it in. It's basically impossible because no one's gonna write a letter uh, and it went to, once you send it in, but yeah, there are methods of doing it using snail mail and that sucks. Now, how do you avoid getting these things done? I told you, I have a thousand videos and only one was Content ID Match. I might get another one on the other Tomb Raider or whatever, on another Tomb Raider Let's Play episode. It's possible, but for the most part right now, one. It's a pretty small percentage. Uh, and the way that I've, again, taken the knowledge that I've gained from my WoW Phony accounts and all those Content ID strikes and Content ID matches and everything, uh, and of course my, uh, my knowledge of the back end of how licensing functions, um, I've actually just naturally been very cautious in how I you know, recorded certain videos. Indies are pretty easy. You could generally get away with indies. AAA games are a lot different. I have done tons, so like 20, what are we, 20, 21 episodes of uh, GTA Online, right? So, so Bro Theft Auto with uh, Shizzle. I've done lots of videos uh, there. I've done lots of videos on other AAA titles. The secret to not getting nailed all the time, or as often as some of these guys are getting nailed, is to turn off the fucking music. Turning off the music, one, as an editor, editor is great because then you could later add the music in that you want and not have it clash with your edited piece. 
So if you watch Bro Theft Auto, go watch any Bro Theft Auto episode. You'll see there's lots of edits and everything. I don't have any music playing in the background. I knew that that would be like one of the biggest ones because when, if I get into a car in Grand Theft Auto and like Dre Day plays, that song's licensed, man. Like it's only a matter of time before that gets flagged. If you're gonna do videos on AAA titles, turn off the music. I know that this is like, that is such a huge thing because music is, especially from someone who's a musician, music is such a big part of the experience. It truly, truly is. But if you want to make if you want to make videos on games that are AAA titles, in some cases it might it might just be best to just turn off the freaking music. You can still get nailed for the cutscenes. Cutscenes another one. Uh, cutscenes is something that you can get nailed for because a lot of times cutscenes will play music even though you have music turned off, uh, and uh, a lot of times cutscenes are visual content ID submitted. For example, the opening scene in Tomb Raider. Uh, which, spoiler alert, she's on a boat and like it crashes, okay, there you go. That video, that opening scene is actually content ID visual, like the video is actually submitted. So if I, if I go and upload that, it will get flagged for content ID. You have to be careful, you have to be savvy with what it is that you are doing from the get-go. You can't react to this stuff afterwards. You can't, you can't go and stream stuff on Twitch and then chop it up later because you're playing and hope that you know the, the music you're playing in the background that is not part of the, the game itself, because you like to stream music while you're playing stuff to keep chat room happy, you can't hope that that is going to just you know make it through the content ID system, especially now with the way that it functions. Just forget it. So turn off music in AAA games and you are very much less likely to get nailed by that stuff. Another good one. You guys notice my Indie for Breakfast episodes don't have intros. I do have you know, intros and stuff like that to other videos that I do, but that's music that I wrote. I understand that a lot of people do not have that luxury of writing their own music and including it. Uh, I will tell you that it's not difficult to do. If you want to go and do it, you can. You don't need, you don't need to have some stupid long, in, like from something from a video co-pilot, some stupid long intro with your name flying all over the place and being all 3D and flashy particle effect. You don't need that shit, man. Just have something that lasts like five seconds. Right, just boom, boom, boom. Have like some bloop, bloop, bloop sounds in the background and that's it, you're done. You don't need to get crazy with it because whenever you get crazy with it and you use something from like Pendulum or, or, or any other you know, mainstream licensed artist, you're gonna get nailed for that stuff eventually. And that's what happened. A lot of people have songs that they, that they don't have license for their intros and they're getting nailed with content ID matches. I, and again, I'm fortunate enough to write my own stuff. You could do it too. If you know how to edit video, you know how to edit music, trust me. So what does this mean for the future of, I guess, like YouTube video content? Once we recognize how much money MCNs are making, we knew that there's only a matter of time for YouTube said, no, we need to get rid of the middleman and make our own, make money for ourselves. Also, uh, the way that, that uh, some MCNs were allowing you to monetize anything, including those little blips that have, those little intros that have your licensed music and everything, they were just automatically approving it, uh, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, is something that you know maybe YouTube is just like hey you know we're gonna go ahead and just like eliminate all that stuff because we can't just have license you can't have these groups going around just licensing hundreds and hundreds and thousands of videos that they do not own the proper licensing for so the future of LPs will probably be you know no music if people don't want to do their own due diligence in, in terms of like avoiding or trying their best to avoid getting content ID you know nailed like I have again thousand videos one claim uh, then they're gonna stop. They're gonna not want to deal with it. They're gonna say YouTube's coming down on me, man I can't do this stuff anymore. You can you just have to be you just have to be more aware of what it is that You're doing and and you know what you might have to stop playing fucking shitty modern warfare or something like that Because maybe modern warfare has tons of cutscenes and stuff like that or tons of of, uh, of Graphics that are a content ID match guess what stop playing it the game sucks anyways Hey, man, but music's part of the experience. I want to be able to post it. Okay, you can you just can't monetize it You don't own it. Yes, of course everybody knows that there's uh, that, that you can fight it with fair use and everything, but fair use is such a gray area. It's such a gray area, man. No, you're not gonna, you could fight it, but are you really gonna take them to court over it? Probably not. I don't think it's gonna happen. Just do your own due diligence in terms of trying to avoid getting nailed by it to begin with, and you will actually be okay. You will be fine. If YouTube ends up getting to the point to where it actually shuts down uh, the ease of making videos for a lot of these YouTube content producers and they decide to walk away from it and go get like, you know, other jobs doing something else. All you're gonna do is just see somebody else come up and make a video in, in its place. There'll just be less incentive for people to do it full time. People like myself, people like Total Biscuit. If they can't monetize videos, you're not gonna continue doing it full time. It's just not gonna happen. So you're not gonna have these long lasting personalities 
that are obviously not managed. The managed people that are managed are going to stick around, of course. The eventuality could be that there's no incentive for them to stick around if they're not going to make money because you're going to do all this stuff for a living. You want to actually make money doing it. That's the only way you can actually make a living is by making money. So that's it, guys. Mike B.A.K. Phony, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.